Vicki Lenane and welcome to Embrace Therapy Podcast. I am a practicing art therapist based in Ireland. In each episode, I will interview guests from various fields of therapy and well-being with the aim to encourage healing through embracing therapy. On the podcast this week is Bernadette Morin. She's a music therapist based in the Midlands. Her private practice is Anam Kjol Music Therapy and it was founded in 2017. She is an ICAT accredited music therapist and is providing music therapy online and in person. I really hope you enjoy our chat today. So you've managed to stay safe and healthy. You haven't managed to. Thanks be to God. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I haven't gotten it. So um, I actually I live here at home with my both my parents are over sixty, and then my uncle is here as well, who's over seventy and has COPD. So we're kind of very protective of them. So we're we're working hard to keep things safe here. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, you need to do your part, don't you, and keep it a tiny bubble. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. So that must mean then that you're you're working remotely at the moment. Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm working mostly online now. I did have one nursing home that I was still visiting, um, or actually I just started to visit them back in October, and uh, after a long time of trying to get funding for for a, a post there so um we just started it really and then after christmas so i was to, due to go back to them last week um but they have put the music therapy program on pause just to kind of minimize visitors and yeah so um and when i suppose when the lockdown is lifted i'll know better about when when we can resume again you know which thankfully I have I have good confidence that it will resume, which is great. You know, I know I will be going back there. So yeah. that's that's something in itself to be grateful for. Oh, gosh, yeah. Like it is the thing that goes first, you know, like the arts. You know, there's so many uh, creative arts therapists working in schools that they were, they were the first to go, do you know, and it is always that way, isn't it? But it's great that you have, you know, good confidence that you'll, you'll be able to go back. And um, I see that's very important. Um, yeah, so- absolutely. So then you had some time there in October um, and and how is it working with that client group for you? At the moment, yeah, I, I mean, I always enjoy working with older people um, since since I did my training because I did um, I did a placement in uh, my independent placement would have been in a local nursing home and I absolutely loved it, you know. Um, so it is it is one of my favorite uh, client populations to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, it was strange in these times, you know, uh, because normally when I would have a group, I would like to kind of move around the room a little bit mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of, you know, play or sing close beside somebody, you know, to kind of really watch for responses, you know, like eye movements or even the tiniest hint of a smile you know um you know i like you but i can't do that now do you know i'm i'm sort of having to stay in one spot in the room and um try and try and squint to see you know um but yeah so that's kind of, that's a challenge in itself you know it's it's made the work an awful lot uh it's it's made it a big difference really, do you know. Um I feel like there's especially, you know, with kind of PPE and things like that, you know, you're wearing a mask that which is already a sort of a little bit of a barrier, but the extra barrier of distance then is I find that really, really challenging when you know, I think there is kind of opportunities for deeper, more meaningful interactions when you're closer to someone but you know we're kind of caught with the times you know and especially that client group like you know older people you know I, I worked in nursing home as well before and yeah touch is so important and even just to like sit down and have the shoulder next to them or the arm next to them like and that opportunity where they might just want to hold your hand for a few minutes yeah. you know and that is something so natural that we can't do because of this distance so I can only imagine like how hard it must be for that kind group like it's just it's really hard yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. And I find that, you know, especially then when it's new clients, that that kind of that kind of thing makes it, you know, it takes more time to build up rapport and to build uh, a bit of, a bit of a relationship you know that's that's what I'm finding with new clients um because my work online I'm working with people I was working with before you know previously yeah. Yeah. so there already is a relationship there it's just transferred onto the online uh kind of platform but when it's when it's a new client then I'm I'm definitely noticing a big difference and the and what makes a different is that kind of distance and um, kind of almost, you know, even as you're going around yourself, there's a little bit of sort of fear in going near anybody, you know. Um, so I'm fearful that just in case I have anything, I'm given it, you know, that kind of thing. Even though I'm full, fully safe, I'm in PPE, I'm sanitized to the last, and you know, but there's still the little bit of fear there. So that I think it definitely impacts the, at least the, establishing the therapeutic relationship you know yeah and and then I suppose you're working online with clients that you've already you know have a good relationship good rapport with um, yeah. and yeah would that mostly be older people or people with um, disabilities I know that that's an area that you're, you're working in as well yeah yeah so um so yeah I work with a group and an individual and yeah they would be uh, service users in disability services and mm -hmm. um, so yeah one of my group was um, a group from a day service that I that I was working with so um, it was actually it was it was that uh, that group that kind of started off they, they initiated the uh, the online sessions uh, because they did yeah yeah it, and it was it was a lovely a lovely surprise you know because when it all kicked off there back in March I was sort of I didn't really know you know because I wouldn't be much of a, a tech head right at all you know <laughs> I'm pretty useless with it all so I kind of didn't really know or couldn't really see how music therapy would work over on, on, online or over video call mm. but when they rang me and said, you know, they kind of asked, is there any way at all? Is there anything we can do? I said, well, look, I'll, I'll look into it, you know? Um, I said, right, you know, this is clearly important enough to you to approach me and see. So I said, right, I'll do my best. And um, so then we started working over Zoom and it's it's got, it's got gone actually very well. There's been some really interesting outcomes so it's it i thank god thank god they came back to me and asked because otherwise i don't know i don't know if i'd have start if i'd have started it up you know yeah you kind of need that little push like you know that this is doable that this will work yeah. you know they have confidence in it and they don't want to miss out you know there's that sense of such value put on the work that you do yeah yeah absolutely and uh, you know that was one of that was one of the things that um kind of it surprised me but also sort of gave me the motivation then to to kind of, to uh start providing the service online because i i suppose i wasn't sure if if the if they would go for it you know if if i did come back and say oh well we could work online i wasn't sure if they would have gone for it or anything like that i suppose maybe that's just maybe that's more of a me thing, you know, that I didn't have confidence in myself to do it or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, so when when they came back, I said, right, well, you know, I'll, I'll do it for them, you know, <laughs> it, it, everything was like, I'll do it for them, you know. Uh, so that was um, well, well done. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks a million. Yeah, I suppose it was it was. Um, yeah, it was it was a bit of it took a bit of time then to sort of uh look into how to how to do it online different ways of doing it i contacted um i contacted one of my old lecturers jason noon who i knew was um he works a lot with technology and it's part a big part of his work so i thought if anybody knows it's him you know so i reached out to him and he was very very kind to share with me some of what he does and um 
kind of to yeah to so it was that was a good start and then obviously we had to train so I did a, some of the trainings that were recommended by the IACAT yeah. and um that and then that was it from there I just went from there and we said we'll see how it goes for the first little while and you know kind of got all the teeth and little teeth and problems out of the way and uh yeah it's been going really well then so far fantastic so how many people do you have in that group um it can vary so it it was a group of six um overall there are seven people who attend it but they never all attend at the same time yeah um, and, this, and then with the way their day services being restructured a little bit they're not all in day service at the same time same time so uh yeah so most most days there is five five is kind of the average yeah. Uh, yeah and it's so and zoom is great that you can have so many and you can see everybody there with the gallery view and everything you know Wonderful. um yeah so it's, it's like you know them how empowering it is for them to have something to look forward to and to tune in and see other people and yeah just it's wonderful yeah absolutely yeah and um I was really I was really pleasantly surprised by the level of engagement as well from from the from my clients because um you know you're starting start with starting something new I was kind of I was a bit apprehensive I was like oh my god I wonder if it's not there if, if if it's not kind of happening immediately like in real life sort of I wonder I was kind of wondering would would it be real enough for for them I, I I'm not quite sure how to put that into words um mm. but that was kind of one of the things I was thinking about would it be real enough mm. and um yeah so I think but I, I think that was um that was kind of quickly overcome anyway because you know they really the the guys really just um they how what how am I trying to put this now um yeah they they do they do engage just as much as some of them even more so really? than if yeah it's funny actually there's um one lady comes to mind in particular who before uh, before the lockdowns and everything, when we were doing the group there at the day service, she would she would come. Oh, so we'd have our group in a circle in one of the rooms there, and she would come and sort of sit, at, kind of on the periphery, you know, of the group. She'd be and at her own sort of table and chair, and she'd look and kind of be really sussing us out and everything and then leave I think she only stayed for one session and I've been working with them for a year oh, wow. you know yeah she found it really hard yeah she did. yeah she would she you know um she would have some issues with anxiety and uh finds it hard to participate in group activities you know um but so one of but one of her kind of goals was um, because we knew that she wanted to participate there was something in there there that wanted to do it but she just kind of what whatever was kind of stopping her you know was kind of making her feel apprehensive and uh so one of the goals for her was um just even to come in and sit for five minutes and then we said well maybe she might sit for 10 or you know very baby steps kind of you know yeah. Um, so that lady then when we started the online uh, sessions we weren't sure how she was going to how what she was going to make of it really but um, it turned as it turned out she absolutely just she's like a different a different person she just she's fully engaged she watches the whole thing on her because she uses a tablet she watches all of it she participates she plays her she has her own special instrument that she kind of handmade from a bisto tin she plays that yeah it's amazing so she plays that and she'll she'll respond maybe to the odd question depending on her mood but um she'll smile a lot like i i never saw her smile as much as in the online session so um it that's been a really interesting turn of events a really interesting outcome from that group in the online so um yeah it definitely changed how i was looking at it i suppose definitely 
that alone is just like job done like that's fantastic <laughs> it really is you know like yeah I have some experience like with people I suppose that would would be very hesitant with groups like that again and mm-hmm just getting them to sit down and you know to actually be present for a few minutes and they might need to walk out and come back in or whatever it's so hard for so many so that's that's fantastic and it does make you kind of think about the the platform itself and how it is you know done from wherever they are you know from their tablet or laptop and yeah. they have control and they know that they can leave at any time they want to a yeah. lot of control is, is kind of left on them but that that that's actually worked really well for that person. It's lovely. Really. It has, yeah, yeah. It's been it's been great. And um, then you know, she, I was actually I was speaking I was speaking to the manager f- from that day service today as well, and we were just talking about as how um, now that they're obviously they're they're not all attending the day service at the same time, and some of them are staying in their residential services. Yeah. Um, and the, a lot of them would have all, been all great friends. So when they come on to the, the Zoom every, we work every two weeks. And when they come on then every fortnight, there is about five or 10 minutes. I do leave them the five or 10 minutes every so, at the start so that they can just connect with each other again because they chat and they say hello to each other, big waves and smiles. And that is probably one of the most beautiful things about those sessions. Um, and so I just, I always leave that five or 10 minutes at the start and, mm. you know, before we kind of start into the structured stuff, do you know? Yeah. So when you're saying the structured stuff, what does that look like? Because I'm sure a lot of the people listening don't really know what the structures of music therapy would be, what they are. Oh, yeah. So yeah, of does, course. What does the session look like? Well, yeah, yeah, I suppose I did. I, I suppose, um, yeah, I'm assuming that everyone, um, everyone knows. But yeah, uh, so we with that group in particular, we start off with a hello song, you know, and we sing hello individually to everybody. And, you know, the, there there's a great laugh from it. And it's a, there's a great element of fun in that. Then um, we would we would do maybe uh, an improvisation that is kind of structured so it's a so we can have structured in, improvisations or more free form but um with certain with certain client populations the structured approach works a bit better and that and all that looks like really is um say we take a very simple chord structure or i use trad tunes because i i'm a trad musician so i use uh trad tunes quite a lot because they they, they're the same thing they're repetitive and strong rhythm so that they work really well in those situations where we can kind of just get warmed up and you know just start exploring instruments and you know playing along with some with some music so that's that's an it's a nice way to start I really like to start the sessions that way mm-hmm. um and then we so we'd vary from different uh, activities we're kind of limited in what we can do and in you know which kind of one this one of the things that i don't you know i don't kind of um enjoy about the zoom is that we it make it's very difficult for everyone to play together you know at the same time because of the way i'm not sure what the right term for it is but the way the sound crosses over you kind of mute each other yes yeah it always chooses one over the other it it, it can never really give all at the same time yeah yeah that's yeah. a challenge i can i can imagine now yeah that can be yeah absolutely so that's um yeah that's a, extremely challenging and you know um but what works nicely is in that situation is where we hold up our instruments and we show that we're playing we show what we have we show what we're playing so it's kind of bringing it a little bit more visual um but it it works you know so that's um and it's you know we can everyone can see how everyone's playing and keep encouraging each other as well um so yeah we do we would vary from kind of um song choice activities to um the other day, the other day, we 
we had we kind of had a, a musical game it was um what did we do now we yeah it was a it incorporating a bit of movement so you know that song happy and you know it yeah yeah um we said if you're happy and you know it play up high or down low and you know just kind of move into left and right and yeah. you know everyone could so it was it worked really well with the zoom session because everyone can see each other doing the actions and they can hear the song and you know it again the you know the the service users got a great laugh out of it as well you know so um it was you know it was very a very positive response you know so we do little activities like that um and yeah it's a, a lot of it is based on turn taken mm. um because i mean that would that would have been one of the original goals for that group as well yeah. but um yeah it's just trying to trying to keep things fresh is challenging you know when you are limited to what you can do and the types of activities you can do but um yeah it's a lot of it really is with that group is um choosing songs and so you know pra practicing those kind of executive skills of choice making and then social skills of turn taking and you know participating with others and that kind of thing so um I'd say connection is a quite an important part as well to, to feel connected and together as a group yeah. absolutely yeah yeah and I think that is one of the biggest things that the zoom session gives them when they can't all see each other or they can't you know or they can't maybe go out and about as much you know um because as you know people aren't visiting at the minute so maybe they don't have as many visitors or they can't visit other people and that kind of thing so yeah definitely connection is probably it's but it's probably shifted to being the main goal of the of their session rather than beforehand where it would have been more on social skills and that kind of thing so um yeah that definitely definitely connection is probably one of the most important goals at the moment and would any of them have any physical disabilities would there be any impairments in that way no no i don't no there's no um no, it's it's um everyone has a, a a degree of intellectual disability. Uh, some would have autism. Uh, but as far as physical disabilities, no, not not in that group. Um, so that's um so we we can that's why we can we're lucky enough that we can incorporate movement a little bit into our, into our sessions. Yeah, that's wonderful. And and what about um you know, would there any be, anybody be nonverbal or have any difficulties with expressing themselves in that? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so some of the, some of the members of that group would, um, yeah, they would be nonverbal. I think only one or two, yeah, one or two of, of the, of the clients would be nonverbal and, um, but they, there is ways then there are ways for them to uh, still, you know, make their choices, you know, without having to speak. So we have, um, I, I usually have them somewhere around. I'm actually in the room that I use for my sessions, but um, I, I have, um, so I have cards where there's a number, they're colored cards, there's a number on the front and they, we can pick a number or a color. Some, some people work better with colors than numbers. So we, pick either one and we play the song that's on the back and you know that's you know it's it's it that's kind of it another way to kind of keep it keep it a bit more um stimulating as well you know to add in add in those skills like numeracy and kind of your recognizing colors yeah so there'd be really like i suppose there'd be a, an educational com a component then to to it as well like you know you're you're really stimulating yeah. The, the brain the cognition so yeah absolutely yeah that's and I try to kind of pick activities that um you know especially for especially for groups where there is a lot of different individual goals and you know you have but you have have to cater to everybody so I would try and choose activities that um 
it, you know, that would encompass a lot of different goal areas. Uh, I, ha I have a book by Maria Ramey. It's actually written and compiled for adults with developmental or intellectual disabilities. So mm. it's it's actually, it's a really, really great book. And I think I, I did put it on my Instagram stories the other day. That's why it's so fresh in my head. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I definitely would rely on that because so many of them are really adaptable for online work, do you know? Um, so it's, it's definitely, it's kind of my Bible at the minute. <laughs> yeah, it's so good yeah. to have some resource that you can just lean on, you know, because I, yeah. I find the prep very, um, you know, intense for online, you know, like it's a lot more thinking involved in, in it. Like just in case something flops, then you have to kind of have something in your back pocket again, <laughs> you know, oh, and totally. yeah. it's a bit more direct. Like I definitely feel it's more direct. Um, anyway but yeah I, I guess I was kind of thinking as well like so you're so far kind of describing an expressive way of work yeah. and with maybe not necessarily in this group but maybe with other individuals would you use maybe more explorative so maybe would they even write their own songs or would they compose or you know I, I'm just wondering about how deep music therapy can go basically with that yeah. explore, like the exploring part of it, you know, with expressive, they're probably, you know, getting to express like how they're feeling and their emotions and how they are then and there. And, yeah. and they're reacting to you and the others in the group in this case, but, you know, maybe on an individual level, do you find that you get to explore even more? Yeah, no, yeah, no, that's, that's a really good point. Um, so yeah, definitely just i mean and i mean this is this is my experience i can't speak to other other people's experience uh, but i definitely find that in individual work you can definitely go that much deeper and um so i'm thinking of i'm thinking of um someone that i'm working with at the minute where um it's take it's taken us a while to get to to this point but that this client is able to kind of direct his own process a little bit more, you know. So um, whereas before he was very much, um, you know, or I don't know, or I don't know what I want to do kind of thing, you know, and kind of so I was having to be a bit more directive a little bit in my approach. But then um, we I seen a change where he sort of said, oh, I want to do more. Um, I want to make another CD, which is was a project he had done previously, where he recorded his own CD with just, you know, he, he was singing along to some backing tracks of his favorite songs. But, um, you know, it was it was kind of it was, it was an important piece of work for him. Yeah. And he was able to give these out to to his uh, friends and family members, you know, um, which was something that he wanted to do, you know, and he knew that he could keep them private or, you know, he it was just, it was just something that he wanted to do. And um, so, yeah, he said that he wanted to make another CD. So we said, okay, we'll pick songs. And uh, songwriting is something I think that down the line, I, I definitely think would be, um, would be uh, in on the cards for for this client definitely, but it's very it's it's very um. It, you know it's it it, ta it takes such such a long time to kind of get to those points as well you know, um especially when you're working with someone who does have intellectual disabilities I what this this is what I find mm -hmm. is that you know you you can be you know, you can be working for a long time before you get deep with with your work, if, you, if, if that makes sense. I think there's an extra barrier with intellectual disability, especially, isn't there? Just, yeah, whatever it might be, you know, there just seems to be. And like you said, it, it can be a little block for a while and then it can be just chipped away at and, and, and eventually mm -hmm. you you get to, to a deeper level, I suppose, like you're saying. Yeah. But yeah, it's funny, like, um, I suppose I, I've worked with some people that are nonverbal, but with the art, you know, it's amazing what can come out, especially with clay and paint. But yeah, I, I suppose from my point of view, 
I'm so curious to know what that might look like or sound like in music therapy, you know, just, yeah. How does that go? Does it come out in like a flow or, you know, is it just something like that? Just that taking ownership part that is just. Yeah. And I mean, that was, that was a really, really important, uh, you know, milestone for, for that client. Like you said, he took, he took ownership. I, I really, I really like that, that phrase. He took ownership of his own process and was able to say, I want to do X, you know, and, you know, I, and I can, and this, this was out of the blue. I hadn't kind of put these, I hadn't put these things on the table because what I would do quite often with them would be to lay out some options for him to choose from, mm. you know, um, but this was just, he said, I want to, you know, I want to make a CD and I said, right, we'll do it you know um and this was over zoom as well so then i kind of thought oh how are we going to do this but we you know we we'll, we're we're still working on it you know yeah. but um it's uh but it was just it was just a big turning point and i think trying to trying to keep him trying to keep him on that then trying to keep him uh making decisions for himself was was then kind of became the focus there and uh yeah so yeah, de definitely. That was that was a big a big moment for him. Yeah, and you know, you kind of have mentioned a few times, um, like the focus. So like mm -hmm. you'd be very solution focused. Like you'd have some kind of thing that you're looking at, and you're going to focus on that, and that would be a goal. So there's there's a good bit of goal setting. Um, would that be done sitting down with a client, or would it be kind of with the whole, um, support system like? maybe their key worker or their support worker yeah 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 i try i try to i try to include the their uh key staff as much as possible you know uh because i mean they they know they know this person so well they're working with them all of the time and if there's ever anything that i'm unsure of you know I can always go back to them and then I can just, I would think it's just important as well to keep in touch and not have, not have music therapy on the periphery, you oh, know, yeah. um, because especially with this, with the client that I was just speaking about, music therapy is the only therapy, therapy that he will actually engage with. You know, he, he won't do counseling. They've tried, you know, his team have tried to get him counseling and other therapies, but he won't do them you know music therapy is his is his only therapy at the minute so um so that definitely i think it's important to keep the team updated and keep you know keep my keep my hat in the ring as you know as in a way you yeah. know because it can i think if we don't do that we kind of will be sort of just on the side with um with other kind of activities you know you, you know i I'm, and I'm not trying to say that in a way that's sort of slagging or anything like that yeah I, I was an activities coordinator in in a nursing home and, and like that again it's as an art therapist working there but trying to compartmentalize my myself being like this isn't therapeutic it's just the activities however it's nice having those skills at the back of your head <laughs> but yeah no i totally get you there is a difference and you know it's about um, liaising with all the staff members because you're not there 24 seven, like you said. And then also if you pick up on something yourself and you, it's nice to be able to kind of hand it over. I find that really beneficial. Like, you know, when you're in the private kind of sector in, in the private practice, it can be hard not to have that handover. So it's lovely yeah. that you can kind of, you know, hand it back or give some feedback at the end. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and it's just because, uh, it was it was pretty it was very much emphasized when we were when we were training as well that you know we i remember taking a, we did a class on note taking and that sort of thing and we it was emphasized that handover is so important you can't just you know do your session make your notes and leave you know <laughs> that's and uh, so that's that was kind of part of why i try and make such an effort to to liaise with the team as much as I can, you know. Um, yeah. And um, 
I suppose I was kind of thinking as well about the kind of musical instruments that you have. Like obviously when it's over Zoom, it's up to them, like that lady with the bisto or, you know, the, the tin and stuff, like it's, it's lovely yeah. that they can make their own instruments. But um, what kind of instruments do you offer? Do you ever use electronical ones? You know, I suppose, what kind of things do you do you have in your toolkit? <laughs> yeah, so I would be, I'd be, yeah, I'd be very um, analog, I suppose. I, I do have lots of um, lots of different uh, small percussion instruments uh, because I travel to clients, so I don't have like my own center. So I travel to clients. So those small percussion are very easily portable, as as you can imagine. Do you know and um, you know, there, you know, I try to choose ones that are nice and colorful um, and then, you know, just a wide range of sounds mm -hmm. or as wide a range of sounds as I can get my hands on. Do you know, um, I think having having instruments, uh, I've a couple of instruments from uh, that people have given me on as gifts from their travels and things like that. So those are usually interesting talking points, yeah. you know, especially with older people. Um, so, you know, I like to kind of tell them this is uh, this is a djembe drum from Africa that my friend brought me back and and they kind of, you know, it kind of it sparks conversations and reminiscence in in those yeah. instruments as well. Yeah. So, you know, um, it so that's, a story to it. <laughs> sorry, it has a story behind it, which is lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it, yeah, just anything that can, anything that can sort of, you know, bridge, mm. make a bridge between two people and, you know, you can connect over something. And even if it's just something that that says, oh, this is nice. Um, uh, I have um, a couple of things that then as well that I try to, I try to include as many instruments that can, you know, that are accessible, I suppose, is how I think of it. Uh, so uh, someone who might not have very strong, fine motor skills, yeah. um, but would have gross motor, you know, we, I've got some bells that attach around the wrists or around the legs, so that even a small little movement makes a sound, you know, um, any anything like that, you know, um, is, is definitely a, bit, a good part of my kit. And uh, then I bring my guitar wherever I go. That's that'll be my main instrument that I that I would use, you know, and then voice and singing. Yeah. And have you ever had to you're talking there about the bells on the wrists and, and maybe the ankle that have you ever had to amend an instrument? Like, have you ever had to, like, I don't know, like get creative and start to think about how to maybe work that one in? <laughs> I, I guess I'm just thinking about even the percussive instruments. Is there any any time that you felt you had to like alter it slightly? To to alter the instrument itself? Yeah, you know? I just wonder, like, has that ever happened? It might not have. <laughs> and then maybe the next week you go in <laughs> or the next time you actually have one in, in person, you might have to. But um it just kind of came to my mind. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's a good one. Um I don't think offhand now, I don't think that that has ever happened before um i don't think so um but that's not to say that it can't happen you know i yeah. you know you could definitely you know you could definitely adjust instruments or you know modify them so that they work for someone else you know mm. um i know that i know that there are um therapists who have if i could think of who talked about this before I'd be doing well um but I know that some therapists with instruments like guitars and things the way that they tune the guitars um can be you know they you know they can use different tunings yeah. to maybe make make it a bit more accessible in that you know say I think someone talked what talked once about using open d tuning on the guitar so yeah. that wherever wherever the the client put their fingers on the fretboard that it that it's still made a, a very musical sound because sometimes with the the kind of standard tuning it's it can it it doesn't kind of um 
it doesn't work in that same way like it, it can mm-hmm. sound kind of discordant and things like that and you know so which is pleasant to some people you know it's but not to everybody do you know and I think a big part of that then was so that the client um the, when when they when they were able to modify the tuning for the client the client felt like their music was more real or something it was more real to them to the client you know they said oh it sounds like something now and um mm-hmm. yeah so that I think looking kind of being creative with you know the tunings of your stringed instruments and like that or um you know maybe using smaller like tenor guitars or ukuleles and things like that um oh, yeah you do yeah <laughs> yeah the ukuleles are great and you know you can get some of them are so durable and they're just you know they're, they're kind of they're ones as well that's that are very in tune with themselves just with the the way they're tuned and everything so mm. you know they always they always sound nice and um yeah so when yeah when you're when you have someone who is looking to who is looking to make music pleasant sounding for themselves it's um you know you can definitely get get creative with your with how your your instruments work definitely yeah it's really giving me food for thought about the the guitar it's yeah it's very interesting um i remember one time working with a fine group and um you know one or two of them would have had strokes so they would have been um, physically very impaired and maybe only had the the use of maybe one side of their face was able to give expression mm-hmm. or their foot so when you said about the bells it, rem- it reminded me of putting um uh, I don't know if it was sleigh bells but it was some kind of nice bell and uh yeah. And I put it around the foot and uh, played the Beatles, you know, just something from his childhood or whatever. And uh, yeah, there was a tear, <laughs> you know, it just really, he, he got into it and he was able to hear himself, yeah. feel it coming from him and really connect. Yeah. Him. It's just magic, those moments, like, can you get that? Yeah, know. absolutely. And it's it's kind of, it's it's discovering a new skill as well, you know, you know, I mean, Obviously, uh, having having a stroke brings limitations to someone who mightn't have had those kind of limitations before, and that can be that can be so disheartening and demotivational for for someone. Um, so I think that, um, in those instances, it's it's really important to show how music can, regardless of whether you've played or anything before, how it can actually open up new skills that you mightn't realize you've had before or um you know new interests it can just open up possibilities i think for people you know so i think that's that's a really really important part of music therapy as well you know and and you mentioned as well that you use um trad because that would be your genre i suppose that you you really practice in um and i suppose it's just it's a lovely kind of common thread between us as Irish people as well to work with that genre um, yeah. and then I, I was kind of thinking as well what other genres do you find really resonates and maybe even stimulates like you said that reminiscence that memory which one do you find alongside trad works well yeah so um I suppose um Depend on depend on who I'm working with, really. But a lot of like say the Beatles or Elvis or that kind of that kind of sixties seventies sort of yeah. sort of music um is definitely definitely one that I would go back to over and over because I suppose if you're working with older people, that was the time of their youth and you know the your kind of teenage years and they're so formative in terms of like your music taste and you know your your memories I suppose and how your personality is growing and music is such a big part of that you know um so yeah that definitely that or even when I'm working with younger people um it's a lot of it is maybe music that their parents might have listened to and that that you know their parents would have put on such a song yeah when they were small or you know that that kind of thing so it's a good mix definitely um and then a lot of 90s music 
yeah uh, yeah definitely so like your your oasis and uh that you know uh, who sang that song breakfast at tiffany's i'm going to be sh i'm going to be absolutely oh, i i can i can yeah they had a weird name yeah i remember them now yeah <laughs> with the names of bands and things like that so um if you remember the guy the lead singer in the video and everything um yeah. but yeah that, you know interesting. like i suppose it of course is going to be you know each person is going to want different genres it's just kind of one of those things i was thinking about um and you know i suppose it, it just provokes emotion doesn't it like music naturally that's just what it does um yeah but it's lovely to to really hone in on that like so when you're saying that maybe younger people they might think about what their family were playing and, and it's just that instant connection to the past connection to maybe the attachment they had with their parents and, and it's yeah. just quite loaded really isn't it music it is yeah it is absolutely and it opens up so much of who you are and you know a lot of and a lot of people um, myself included i definitely consider myself one of those people who music and the, not not even just playing music but the the music that you listen to your taste is such a firm part of your identity mm. you know you can say a lot about yourself with a playlist of 10 songs i think mm. you know and um you know you, someone can kind of get a sense of who you are who you might be or you know so it's it's definitely as you say loaded you know music really is and you're you know and isn't, isn't it one of the first questions you know that we ask someone when we're getting to know them so what do you like music do you what do you listen to or that kind of thing so yeah. it's it is definitely a way of getting to know someone very deeply that's it makes me think of uh desert island discs you know that uh radio <laughs> show it makes you think of that because it's like that was and it still works to this day you know it, it's it's timeless because yeah. we are just interested in what people listen to and then the the whole story behind desert island discs of you know the the memories they might have with the song or why they choose those discs um, yeah yeah i think you're right um so you know i'm really grateful that you came on today bernadette and that you know you, you told us about your work you're doing online and in the midlands um i suppose I don't want to say that this is the end, but it's, you know, I'd love to have you back on at some stage and we can talk about maybe how you're getting on when the pandemic is finished and we can go back into the world again and yeah. how you're getting on with groups as well. But um, so you can be found on the internet, on Facebook and Instagram, and you have your website as well, which is, I'm going to get you to say it because I might mess it up. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, um, so my, practice name is Anam Kjol Music Therapy and so we actually only launched the Instagram and everything today we had a Facebook page for a long time uh, but we just I just said you know it's it's time to put my hand up and say I'm here you know so <laughs> so we just launched on everything we um so we're on Facebook as Anam Kjol Music Therapy and the same on Instagram Twitter you and you'll find us on LinkedIn I think as well so <laughs> brilliant that's fantastic and of course I was looking at your beautiful site that's on the iCat website as well which is Anam yeah. Kiel yeah it's lovely yeah. thank you for reminding me of that one yeah yeah thank you it's a great one just because everything's there and it's very you know clear and concise and you can be contacted there I think it's Anam Kiel at gmail.com is it or yeah, anamkeolmt at gmail.com. Yeah. Gorgeous. So just in case. That's lovely. Fantastic. 